Solar energy storage. What is it and how do I know if I need it with my solar power system? In this video, I'm going to be teaching you about how battery energy storage systems work, how they tie in with your solar system, and what benefits they could provide to you as a homeowner. Okay, so in today's video, we're talking about solar energy storage. And let's start out by defining what is solar energy storage. Now, typically when we're talking about a solar energy storage system, we're talking about batteries. And uh, batteries have come through many different stages of evolution. Uh, when I started in solar about 12 years ago, we used forklift and golf cart style batteries, you know, 12 volt uh, flooded lead acid batteries. Um, to now some of the newer chemistries like the lithium NMC and the lithium iron phosphate home battery systems. But basically when you're talking about solar energy storage, you're talking about some sort of a battery or battery uh, energy storage system that allows you to keep some of the solar energy that you've harvested for use at a later time. Now, why would I need solar energy storage or why, why would I need energy storage as part of my solar system? Well, the first reason is very simply for emergency backup power. Now, solar energy produces during daylight hours, but if you want a system that's capable of running independent of the power grid or in the event of a grid blackout, then you need to have battery storage in addition to solar panels. Uh, and the way a system like that will work is that the solar panels can directly power the loads and charge the battery during daylight hours. So typically you're going to have excess solar production during daylight hours and that excess can be charged in your battery. And then during the evening hours, you can just draw energy off your battery so that you can keep secure power on in your home 24 hours a day. And then the next day, the solar panels take over again and recharge the battery. And you can repeat that cycle as many times as needed. That's why many people, myself included, consider solar with energy storage as the most secure emergency backup power because it's truly renewable. You don't have to worry about fuel availability or fuel storage. Now, the other reason you might consider adding energy storage to your solar system is to maximize self-consumption. And this is typically when your, your power company does not have a solar buyback program or they're not giving you a fair competitive rate on your solar buyback. Now, when solar net metering programs first came into the marketplace, uh, it was basically a, a one for one trading back and forth with the power company. So during daylight hours, you can directly power your house from the solar panels and then all of your excess solar production could get sent back out the electric meter and sold back to the power company. And so basically any excess kilowatt hours that you sent to the power company during daylight hours, you could then pull that energy back in during evening hours using the credits that you already built up. Um, and, and back in the day, it was an even one for one trade. So if you send them a kilowatt hour during the daytime, you can pull that one back in at nighttime. But what we're seeing now, the trend really being led by California and this new net metering 3.0 is that the utilities are no longer giving you a one for one even buyback. Uh, in, in fact, in the case of California, you now have to send them four kilowatt hours for every one that you get to pull back. And so if you're looking at solar as an investment that you want to perform well for you financially, selling back to the uh, power company at a four to one discounted rate really doesn't make sense. In fact, you'd be much better off just charging whatever excess solar energy you have during the daytime, using that to charge into a battery or into an energy storage system and then just draw your, your evening needs from the battery system, as opposed to having to buy and trade back and forth with the power company. Uh, and then of course, the next day the solar takes over, powers the house and recharges the battery. So this is a trend that we believe is going to continue. Uh, a number of other states have already announced that they're gonna be eliminating or cutting back their solar net metering programs. Uh, we've, we've seen it in Ohio, we've seen it in North Carolina. And we expect, you know, California kind of is the trendsetter when it comes to solar net metering policy. So if they're rolling net metering back in California, which was really kind of like the solar capital of the country, right, kind of leading the way, we expect to see these changes in other states, which means that if you want to get the best return on investment on your solar system, you're going to want to add battery storage or energy storage along with the solar panels. Now, when it comes to solar batteries, there's a lot of options out there, but they pretty much all fall into one of two categories. 
which is AC coupled batteries or DC coupled batteries. Now, when we talk about AC coupled or DC coupled, what we're talking about is where does the connection or where does the interface between the solar system and the battery system take place? Does it take place on the DC side, the direct current side of the system? You see, solar panels, solar cells, and battery cells are all natively DC electrical devices, direct current or constant voltage. And so it's actually more efficient to keep the electricity in direct current format if you want to charge batteries from solar panels. So the direct DC to DC battery charging is more efficient. However, our homes and the electric grid is wired for alternating current. And so if we wanna interface the solar system or the battery system with our home's electrical system or sell back to the power company, there has to be an inversion, which is converting from DC electricity to AC, alternating current electricity. And so some batteries have a direct DC solar to battery connection. Those are called DC coupled systems. Other batteries have an AC coupled uh, system, which means that the connection between solar and batteries actually happens at the AC circuit breaker panel or on the AC side of the system. Uh, by the way, if you'd like to learn more about how to choose the best battery system for your home, uh, go back and watch our previous video where we explain how to choose the best solar battery and some of the pros and cons of each. Now, there's also different chemistries available when it comes to battery storage. Now, back in the day, as I mentioned, we would use old lead acid batteries, uh, but that chemistry is pretty much gone out of fashion completely if you're talking about a home energy storage system. Uh, the two lithium-based chemistries that are in use today are the lithium NMC, nickel manganese cobalt, as well as the lithium ferrophosphate phosphate or LFP, lithium iron phosphate. Now, the NMC chemistry was brought to popularity first by electric vehicle manufacturers. And some of the advantages of the lithium NMC chemistry is that it provides greater energy density, meaning you, you can store more energy in a smaller space and a smaller, smaller mass, which is great for electric vehicles, right? Because you don't want to carry around any extra weight if you don't have to. Um, it also provided for rapid charge and rapid discharge, which is very important if you're thinking about accelerating an electric vehicle, getting the vehicle up to speed quickly, um, or if you have to plug that vehicle in and, and charge it quickly so you're not waiting too long to have to sit there and wait while your electric vehicle recharges. So NMC chemistry has advantages in those applications. The downside though, is that in certain rare cases, you can experience thermal runaway. And thermal runaway basically is a fancy way of saying the battery cells catch on fire, the battery explodes. So obviously this is not what you want if you're talking about a home battery system. And so that's where the lithium iron phosphate chemistry has become more popular for stationary applications in home battery storage. Now the advantage of the lithium iron phosphate battery is it's more durable uh, and it operates at a cooler temperature. So you don't have this risk of thermal runaway or the battery exploding. However, the trade-off is it takes up more physical space and it's heavier, the batteries weigh more. And that's actually one of the issues that the industry is dealing with is sort of trading off having larger batteries that, that offer higher capacity, but in some cases the batteries are so heavy that logistically it becomes a, a huge burden on the contractor to be able to even get the battery into place to install it. But if you're talking about a home storage battery, most homeowners prefer the lithium iron phosphate chemistry because as long as you have wall space in your garage or you've got a place you can put the battery, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit heavier or a little bit larger in volume compared to the NMC chemistry. By the way, post a comment down below if you have a solar power system and you're planning on adding battery storage to your system in the near future. So folks, this has been a brief discussion of solar energy storage. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and also go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Uh, of course, if you're a homeowner out there, if you're looking at solar energy storage options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote or maybe you already have a price quote and you need to get a comparison quote to make sure that you're getting the right equipment or getting the best deal, uh, as always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below there. Uh, it'll take you to our website where you can either set up a call with a solar expert uh, or just use our free online quote tool so you can find out how much solar energy storage costs 
in your area. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I thank you for spending some more time with Solar Surge. And I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. All right, I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your business or product or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, we can help you do that. Feel free to use the link below to set up a call with our media team so that we can discuss your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you would like to have your business or product or technology introduced to our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to us on the link below to set up a call with our media team or email media at solarsurge.net.